Um, coming up, I'm doing a series of talks uh, about your relationship with God. And this is one of those talks that I want to give to you today. It's a talk about, I want to focus today on the subject of faith. And it's a very, very important subject to focus on, um, not only for ourselves who have already maybe heard a little bit about the divine love part, but also in terms of your discussions with other people and helping them see where you're coming from. It will help those kind of things quite a lot if they can see where you're coming from. So we'll get started on that subject, shall we? Okay. So you've had this fellow come along into your life um, through your law of attraction, by the way, <laughs> who, who says he's Jesus and says uh, a lot of things that nobody's really said before about, about, about the soul and other things. Now, some of the things, of course, you've heard before. Some of the things you've heard and have been present on the earth for hundreds and if not thousands of years. And then there's other things that are quite different that you've not heard before. And, and so you're listening to this material. And part of this material is you get presented to you that God is an entity. And many of us previously were probably thinking that God was a, some kind of energy field or energy force or just the whole universal love is God. Um, and so the concept that God is a, an entity, well, in the, in the end, is quite mind-blowing if you think about it because... How can an entity have created everything that we see on this planet, everything we see in the universe, everything that we see in the spiritual universes, all of the dimensional existences, there are currently 22 or so of them. How, how, do, how, do we, um, how can we even conceive that there's a person who actually put all that in place? That's a pretty big ask, isn't it, for many of us to even conceive that. So we'd prefer to believe that it's just an energy or some kind of thing without personality. But no, this guy who's come along who's saying that he's Jesus is saying that God is actually a, has personality, that God is an entity that has attributes and characteristics. And that in itself is a bit of a stretch. Some of us come from a background of religious background, like Christian religious background, and so we've always perhaps thought that God is an entity, but sometimes we've thought that God was three entities in one. Um, so even that's confronting to see God as just one single entity and that the three so-called three entities, Jesus, the second part of the, the, the Godhead, if you like, and the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead, aren't a really a part of the Godhead at all. And so that's quite confronting for us to face up to. Anyway, on top of that, he says, this person that you've met says that you are a half of a soul and and I purposely draw them larger than God at this point because we've got to get some perspective. God's, for many of us, a long way away, so therefore quite small. <laughs> Isn't that the case? And, and we feel our life is very centric around ourselves. We were very self-reliant, so we, we're very connected with ourselves. And, and he's talked about how we've got this spirit body, which most of us at some point felt probably that we have, you know, and, and although many don't. And then... Um, we also have a material body, obviously. So we have all of these concepts presented. And then we start talking about concepts like how the soul unifies and all of those kind of concepts, which are all quite triggering. And then we start looking at the laws of God. We start looking at the law of attraction as it really is. And that's pretty different to what like, people like the secret and all those kind of things say it is. And then we look at the laws of desire and longing and how that affects everything. And we start, we start analysing all these things and we start seeing, in fact, that this soul has the ability to connect to God through a connection. So we start learning about that connection of longing for God's love. And we've started to grasp that, that we can actually long for God's love and have God's love enter us. And that actually transforms the soul into a new creature. And then we start realising that actually it's not quite as simple as what we read in the Paget messages in the sense that, you know, you just long for it and the love enters you and that's it. It's not quite <laughs> simple as that. The reason why it's not quite that simple is there's been people doing that for 40 years and they're still not at one with God. And yet in the first century I became at one with God in, by the time I was 30. So, so obviously if people have been doing it for 40 years, they've got to be doing something wrong. 
It makes sense, doesn't it? So we start learning about all of those things, but, but still there's something going on for us, you see, a lot of the times. There's still, we're still in this intellectual zone of going, hmm, it's all very interesting. You know? Yes, I, you know, I, can, I, I can feel some truths in it all, but there's, then I get confronted with some pretty harsh things that AJ says it feels like sometimes. Like, like one thing he says is that there's a whole group of things we've got to work on called morals. And we've got to work on this group of morals and, and down to the point where we can't even look at a woman without committing adultery with her. Like, whoa, like, like that's the opposite of what everyone else thinks. You can look as much as you like and you haven't done anything. Right? And then there's, you've got this guy saying, well, no, the way God's dealt with morals, the way the truth is about morals, is that actually if you even look at something or have a feeling for something that's out of harmony with love, instantly there's a, there's a penalty on your soul. Now that's pretty confronting like, and hard to believe. I don't feel necessarily the penalty on my soul. It feels quite good when I walk along the street and look at all the women up and down. You know, I feel quite happy with that. Or you know, when I get out my porn magazine or whatever else. And so it's really... And then, then of course, like, yeah, you know, when it comes to taxation, we get triggered a bit, don't we? Like, yeah, we put in that. Oh, we didn't spend that, but we were allowed to get $500 back from that one, so we put that one down as well. And before you know it, you've got a lot of lies happening, and he's even saying to you, even the desire to lie is actually an immoral thing from God's perspective. Oh, geez, this is pretty hard now, like, isn't it? Like, pretty hard... But then, it, but then the funny thing is that it still feels like it resonates with me somehow, somewhere. And so, okay, okay, I'll go along to another session. And so you go along to another session and lo and behold he starts talking about these things called emotions, right? And it's just like, I've been in my head all my life and, and it's been fine up till now. <laughs> and, he's saying, and he's saying, I've got to connect with my emotions, he's, uh, that I've got to actually start allowing my true emotional state. And in fact, he's saying many times that, that actually what I think I'm feeling, I'm not even actually feeling. And I'm feeling something totally different. And, and I put up my hand and I say, I ask a question. He says, instead of answering the damn question, he actually focused on the emotional reason why I asked the question. <laughs> like, that's pretty confronting too. So, so, so he's talking about all these emotions and I go, and I go away and I gel over that a bit, feel about that a bit. And I feel, you know, I still feel attracted to this, you know. It still feels truthful to me. But, I, but I'm not really certain about putting it all into practice yet or whatever. It just feels right, you know. There's something right about this. And so I go along to another session. And then you go along to another session, he starts talking about these things called desires. And he says that you have really a couple of different types of desires. There's addictive desires, which we discussed yesterday. And... and if I look at my whole life, most of my life's addictions, like, <laughs> far out. Like, you mean I've got to give up all of them? Like, like that doesn't, doesn't even feel fair. It doesn't even feel... You mean that somebody being angry with me and I get upset about it and I'm out of harmony? Like, how does that work, you know? So we have a lot of these kind of feelings about that coming up, right? But it's still, there's still this resonant thing going on inside of my soul going, yes still feels true for some reason. Like, I don't really understand, but it still feels true. So then he starts talking about um, beliefs. And that they all have to come into harmony with God. Whoa, like, like I've got hundreds of them, hundreds of them, that I was brought up with. Some of them are, are deeply cherished beliefs that I actually have, like... I believe totally my mum loved me. That's a belief. And, and he's basically challenging even that, that, he, that my mum didn't even know how to love me, so how could she love me? Like he's challenging even that. And sure, sometimes there was a pure love coming from her, but sometimes it was neediness, control, and all these other things coming. And then on top of that, we've got all these beliefs about religious beliefs, you know, like, like I'm really attached to the idea of reincarnation. I really like it. And he's telling me it's not, you know, it's not how everybody's saying it is. That there is reincarnation, but it's not how everybody's saying. And, it, and, then, and then he starts talking about these things called spirits. Like, 
like, sure, like, I know I have a spirit body and everything, and, but, but, you know, out of sight, out of mind. If you can't see them, then they can't be influencing you. That's what we think a lot of the time, don't we? And so, so and he's now saying, in the, this is all in the mix as well. And all of these things, and then, you know, he starts talking about all the errors that are in. And then on top of that, after dealing with all that, he also wants me to change some things called truths inside of me. All right, so they've got to enter me as well. God's truths, I mean, not, not, our, not our own. And all of these things are a part of this desire or effect, the desire to connect to God. And all of these affect my relationship with God. Now, now I'm, I'm going, by now I'm going, geez, like, what started out a simple three things, which, was, which were have a longing for God's love, have a longing for God's truth, and feel all my emotions in humility, which all sounds pretty easy to do, really. Right? Sounds pretty simple to me. All of a sudden, there's all these aspects of it that, oh, it's not... Those three things are like... They feel almost impossible now. <laughs> Particularly the third one, the one about being humble and feeling everything. Uh, that feels really, really difficult. And, and this person who's... And to, to top it off, the person saying he's Jesus, which how unbelievable is that, right? That's pretty unbelievable too, right? So, so on top of that, you've got this unbelievable person saying all these unbelievable things, but that are resonating with my soul. So am I crazy or what? That's what it feels like a lot of the time inside of ourselves, right? So all of these things are getting presented as truths, and obviously there are a lot more truths than this. You know, he's also talking about this thing being my soul. And my soul is not my spirit body, is not my material body. It's not something actually that I can see, but I can feel all the time and I can live in it. And it's actually my soul condition that determines my level of happiness, not only on the planet here on earth, but also when we arrive in the spirit world and thereafter. And we can change our soul condition. Well, that's good news, like, but gee, it sounds pretty hard uh, already, right? And so there I am sitting with all this information. I've been listening now, let's say, for a year of it. Right? It's appealed to my soul that entire time and I've been listening to it for a year or maybe even two years, sometimes even three years or so. And sure, like, you know, AJ seems like a nice enough fellow, but gee whiz, you get on the internet and there's a lot of people pretty angry with him. And they all bringing up all these past things that who knows whether they're true or not. You know, AJ's got his version, they've got their version. Who knows what really did happen, right? So here I am, I'm, you know, there's this lot of this stuff going on inside of me and I'm still in my mind, really, in a lot of ways, trying to work through it all, trying to determine what's true, what isn't true. Do I, do I practice this? Do I not practice it? You know, I feel drawn to it and I've been longing for truth all of my life and I feel drawn to it but, but it, there also feels like a lot of problems with it to me as well. There's a lot of things that AJ says that I'd prefer to just go like, and just or let it go straight through and out the other end because, because in the end of the day, if, if I let it settle with me, there's heaps of emotions. For example, what about when AJ talks about abortion being a murder? Gee, that's pretty confronting. That, that means that sometimes half the women in an audience are murderesses and half the men with them who force them or coerce them into doing an abortion are too. Gee, that's pretty confronting. And then, but AJ doesn't seem to have any judgment about it. That seems to be a fairly good thing. But he is stating these things as truths. And I don't know whether they're God's truth or not, do I? Like, AJ seems to think he knows, but I don't know whether they're God's truth or not when I'm listening to it all. So how am I going to sort all this out, all this stuff out? How am I going to come to some kind of internal resolution of all of these things that, I've learnt, that I'm learning and continuing to learn? Well, the answer is by faith. And I'm not talking about faith in what I'm saying to you. I'm not even talking about faith in anyone else on this planet. I'm talking about faith in respect to one particular being and that is God. 